Hi there, I'm Faith Daggs. I'm an obstetrician gynecologist who's the medical director at Reply OBGYN and Fertility. And I'm here to talk to you about an important topic, cervical fluid and discharge. So just a warning, this material I'm going to cover may make you feel uncomfortable. It's not dinner table conversation, but it's both important to your overall health and wellness and your fertility. Buckle up and don't ignore your discharge. Okay, let's get started. I'm gonna jump right in. Um, a big part of what we teach patients about is the physical signs and symptoms of a woman's fertility. Um, those include her period, but more importantly, the time frame that can occur within uh, one to several weeks after her period of her mucus cycle. Um, that mucus, comes from the cervix. We also call it cervical fluid, or it can even be referred to as vaginal um, discharge. And its properties give us different information about what's going on in that woman's body. In particular, that cervical fluid is vital for the woman understanding when she's fertile, but it's also vital for her partner's fertility. So men and women need the context of each other to be fertile, that is to reproduce. And the mucus a woman makes allows her partner's sperm to get to the, her target, which is her egg, in order for conception to occur. That cervical mucus is made in a woman's body when her she is making the hormone estrogen um, and there's three different kinds of estrogen in our body but the main one is estradiol in um, a woman who is ovulating and as those estradiol levels rise her cervix which is the very bottom portion of her uterus begins to make mucus in order to provide a physical uh, channels for that sperm to travel one of my patients uh, used to call it um, her husband's mucus highway. Um, the properties of the mucus are a result of the influence of that estrogen. As the estrogen levels rise, um, water, which is a big component of our whole body, but especially of mucus, the water content rises, the types of electrolytes within the um, fluid increase, the mucins, which are the proteins, the chemicals that make up that mucus also change in their physical properties and become very fluid and um, permissible to sperm swimming through to get into the uterus and eventually to the fallopian tube. So when a woman can recognize the ebb and flow of her changing discharges from the vagina, the presence of mucus that's come from the cervix during her cycle. She can understand when she's fertile, but she can also understand if things aren't going quite right. If the color is not clear, if it's yellow, or if the characteristics of it aren't that fluid and it's gummy and tacky, that could be uh, a sign that she's changed to a non-fertile state or even could be a sign that maybe something is going on um, that's affecting the health of her cervix, a local infection or inflammation. So that being said, this uh, mucus discharge that for some women just may be a bothersome part of their cycle actually is a vital sign. Um, something that's really telling her what's going on in her body um, through the different portions of her cycle. And it can help her to understand, um, as I mentioned, if uh, maybe she's drinking enough fluid or dehydrated, um, if she has um, an infection um, going on. Um, it helps her to understand that interplay of the hormones when that mucus changes uh, from something that's very fluid and stretchy and very much like egg white in quality to something that's sticky and pasty and tack tacky. That's a sign that probably she's transitioned past her fertile time into her cycle to her luteal phase where her body and especially her uterus is maybe getting ready to welcome a pregnancy. 
Um, and even being able to, from a practical purpose, um, predict the onset, let, let her know when her period is going to begin a couple weeks later. So maybe she, you know, come plan whether she's going to the beach or not in a couple. And so it can give practical information, but more so really helps that woman to understand what might be going on with her health. That being said, sometimes when that mucus is abnormal in character or even when it's absent, um, it might be telling her that there's something abnormal um, going on that um, maybe she's not making quite enough uh, hormones or maybe there could be another underlying condition affecting her fertile uh, time of her cycle like thyroid disorder or um, an inflammatory disorder or even a metabolic disorder um, uh, that you know could be influencing the regularity of her cycle and even the presence of a potential fertile time in her cycle. So patients want to know, well, how is the doctor going to evaluate me when I see them during the visit for this cervical fluid? Um, you know, how does has the doctor check on that if you tell me it's something that, that I'm mainly seeing? And so a physician who's uh, trained or even an advanced practice provider like a nurse midwife or a nurse practitioner um, or a physician assistant who's been trained in the use of fertility awareness based methods and is working within the context of women's health is often going to ask her patient pretty pointed uh, questions um, about do they notice these discharges in their cycle? Are they recording them? Um, are they seeing them several times a day? Does the character change during one point of the cycle or not? Or do you feel like your signs look different in the past than they do now? So just in um, taking that history and asking some real particular questions because we can't see the patient every day in her cycle about what's going on during the different uh, points in her cycle help us to maybe understand what's going on with her cervical fluid discharges. Um, also, we use the physical exam to understand the health of the cervix and to um, look at that discharge. And with that woman's information, knowing when her um, the beginning of her last period was, knowing what day she is in her cycle, if she's bringing some charting material, we can understand maybe when her fertile window is during her cycle, that physical exam is going to take on a whole new uh, context. And particularly when you have a provider who has been trained in these methods, sometimes even with the physical exam and the evaluation of the cervix, without knowing that information, they can tell the patient, oh yeah, I bet your period was about, you know, a couple weeks ago and seeing this clear discharge, uh, I think you're probably getting ready to um, ovulate. So just the visualization of the, of the cervix and the discharges at that time on physical exam are part of how the, the physician or advanced practice provider can evaluate the patient. And then if the patient has described concerns about the quality of her discharges, um, or if there's symptoms associated with the time she has discharged, like um, blood in her discharge or painful um, pelvic uh, 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 sensations during her fertile time or at other times in the cycle or a sensation of discomfort um, associated at, at when discharges are present, the provider can then uh, direct the evaluation to look for maybe infections and take cultures or maybe even a pap smear if that patient is describing abnormal bleeding associated with her discharge. So it can also be a tool that can help us direct the use of appropriate a medical evaluation like cultures and pap smear to see if there's anything abnormal about what's going on in the cervix. And then, you know, finally, you know, in if this, if I'm talking about something totally new to you, how can I as a woman um, learn more about my own cervical fluid and vaginal discharge in order to use this information 
um, as a monitoring tool for my cycle, as a tool for family planning, whether it's to help uh, achieve pregnancy um, or make the best of those times in the cycle for attempting pregnancy or use that information to avoid or space pregnancies, uh, knowing that fertile window in cooperation with your partner. Um, there are many uh, different fertility awareness-based methods um, that women and couples can use. Um, they can be learned independently, but even better um, by working with an instructor, um, that woman can really come to understand what her body is uh, speaking to her about, and even to understand when it may be appropriate to seek the help um, of a medical provider um, when things don't quite look right or um, when maybe there's no discharge at all. If you'd like to learn more about your fertility, Reply is here. Call or visit us at replyobgyn.com or 919-230-2100 to schedule an appointment with one of our physicians or certified nurse midwives. We're looking forward to seeing you.